Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Juju Show number 36. I'm here with our community folks, James Beatty. How are you doing, James? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good to be here. How's the weather out west? I'm flying out there tomorrow. I'm going to be out there all next week. Tell me you got good good news. We kind of have a hybrid model going right now. Uh, real nice. Real nice yesterday, but uh, quite a surprise this morning. The clouds are rolling in, so uh, come prepared. All right, I will make sure I bring it. I'll put a jacket in the bag. But all right, cool. And how you doing, Sandor? Doing well, doing well. Yeah, we're having fun. All right, so we're gonna go quick because with the news, because everyone's getting ready. The team will be out at a sprint next week, which will be really exciting. Um, but so for this show, we got a couple of news items, and then I've got continuation or maybe a replacement for last episode's debacle and so we'll we'll see what we got there so news wise bd you hit the news with slurm charms what is a slurm charm and why do i care and why do i sound funny saying the word slurm uh, well i'll say this with a grain of salt but um you know to my understanding slurm is kind of the de facto uh scheduler worker uh, computational foundation for a lot of the um, work that's done in the HPC community. Um, so, you know, whether you're doing uh, fluid dynamics or, uh, or so, some kind of, uh, you know, financial uh, financial model regressions, uh, you can basically use this scheduler to um, run S batch jobs and uh, schedule the workout upon your uh, available worker resources. So it's a really handy thing to have around if you um, are in that industry, just being to get Slurm up and up and running um, with the deploy of a charm is just a huge thing. So, uh, you know, uh, myself and a group of other guys thought it would be advantageous if um, we kind of built on top of what was already out there. Um, as far as the Slurm charms go, a bunch of people have a bunch uh, a handful of good ideas and uh, we just thought we'd run with it. So, um, yeah. Cool. Well, you're looking to do some financial regression modeling stuff. Um, go check out the charm store because BD's charms are now promulgated and uh, you might see something about that in a minute. Um, so, uh, next up, release time, release time. Everyone loves release time. Um, Juju 2.3.8, the latest stable release of 2.3 is out and it should address the last known outstanding Bionic issues. So if you were like, oh, I want to play with Bionic, the latest, greatest Ubuntu server, and hit issues with Juju and that, um, hopefully they're all gone away now. We, we think so. So go give it a shot. Make sure to get your controllers and your models all upgraded to the latest fancy 238. And for those of you who like to just bleed, bleed, bleed on the bleeding edge, go check out the new release of Juju 2.4, which is the beta 3 release. And don't know if at the end of this week we'll have beta 4 or RC1 yet, but we're getting really close. Uh, again, a lot of the same fixes for Bionic are in the 2.4 release. There's some proxy changes to be aware of, and this is one that we should probably highlight better. Um, it came to light the last sprint that there's kind of a fundamental proxy issue in that. In complex network environments, um, if you you may need a proxy for some things and not others. So, for instance, when you have things like um, local app caches or whatnot, you may not need a proxy for them. But if you need to reach outside to the Internet, you may need a proxy for that. Um, it could be that your charms are reaching, can reach some things without a proxy and some with. And so uh, rather than having Juju just set the proxy on the, on the host and being like, hey, anytime you ever go outside your little network, go through this proxy, um, the charms are able to be more intelligent and pull the, pull the proxy info from Juju um, when it needs it and don't bother with it when you don't. Um, so check out the release notes on the beta three and play with that and provide some feedback. And it may be um, room for some folks to update some charms as that proxy kind of work moves forward in the 2.4 release. Um, and that's the news. Releases ever uh, anyone running who's who's not running two three eight? Come on now, admit it. Um, you should see two three seven hitting jazz controllers. That, a lot of them have been upgraded so far. I don't think all the models have been updated, but if you do run on jazz and you create a new model, you should see getting two three out there and about, which is good. 
Uh, and hopefully in the near future, we'll get uh, all those updated to in the, the two, three line. Uh, and that will be awesome to have some of that new feature there. But so with that, let's go to show and tell, show and tell. All right. Can everyone see my terminal? Going once, going twice. Oh, come on. You guys are killing me. Can you oh, see yeah, looks, terminal? Looks there great. we go. All looks right. Great, all right. Man. All right, right. You may look something familiar here. Uh, Slurm. Hey, so James said I could run Slurm. So I said, sweet. I'm running Slurm. <laughs> um, and the reason I want to do that is, is I want to show something here. Let's do something fun. Uh, let's, uh, how much I've got one Slurm node right now. That's not enough. I need, I need more of those. So let's juju add unit. Um, do five more because, because I can. And come on, you can do it. Oh, here we go. And they're starting to come up. Now, while that comes up, let me show you something cool. This is actually all running in LexD. And so, hey, that's cool. It's LexD, except notice in this location column that they are being spread out amongst different nooks in my MADS cluster. And that's because I'm running a Lexi cluster. Hey! So I have a three node Lexi cluster that is fully operational, as they say. I have bootstrapped. I'm actually running on Nook 3, if you see the, uh, the shell here. So what we have working, and this is going to be in 2.4, but I'm going to just put disclaimers all out the all over the place. But for the moment, what we're trying to do is make sure that if you have a Lexi cluster, you can bootstrap onto the cluster itself, then I can run Juju as if it was a local host, like I had my own Lex, you know, my own LexD on my own machine, except the one on my machine is in fact able is part of the cluster. So from here, um, let's see, I can bootstrap and I can create a new cluster me too and it will go through and give me another controller on the LexD cluster. What's fun with this is a few things, besides one that I can kind of scale out and create a bunch of containers. And rather than running all these containers on just one machine, they're spread out amongst the three machines. It's for the first time I've been able to do LexD and I can do, let's see, do you show controller? Um, let's do this first. Controllers. Oh, all right, do you show controller uh, cluster? Notice that I'm running my Juju controller in HA mode. So I can switch over to the controller model. Um, cluster me and controller is the model I want. Ah, my bad. And when I run Juju status here, I can see my three machines making up my controller. So here I am using Lexi. I've got HA Juju controllers. I've got three machines. I could add more additional machines to my cluster. Um, my MAS has six or seven machines into it, and I could basically grow out my Lexi cluster if I wanted to. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So you can actually test some more HA uh, and, and kind of things talking across different networks uh, scenario here. Why is Lexi list not working for me? That is just awesome. So, um, does do do we have the concept of availability zones in this model? In this uh, usage of of LexD clustering and Juju together. So, what we have is um, it tr it tries to spread across the machines in the cluster. So, what you may have noticed is um, I've got three machines here uh, for my controller in HA and. Why is it like LXC list? Am I missing something? Or am I just oh, Lex, Lex, Lex D dot Lexi list, I think. Oh, I just did a Lexi list earlier. Yeah. Um, let's try to match up numbers. So this is 13012. So if I go back here and I look for instance 13012, notice that each of my controller uh, nodes are on a different Nook physical machine. 
And so like we would try to spread across different uh, availability zones in a region, um, we would do the same thing across the machines in the LexD cluster. Awesome. So um, yeah, the, I just try to get LexD to look more cloud-like. Now, what it, here's where the disclaimers will start. Okay. So number one, again, this is Juju client on the machine that is a cluster saying, talk to my local LexD, um, which just happens to be set up in cluster mode. This is not on my laptop, I have Juju talking to a cluster of machines in the closet across the house, right? That is the next chunk of work that'll be gone going. It will not be complete in Juju 2.4, but it'll be in the future release. And the team that's gotten this much working is already, they're working in and diving in on that. Um, so there, this is great for testing. It's still not really a, hey, I've got five pieces of old you know, iron sitting around that I want to leverage to make a big LexD cluster and then throw an OpenStack at it or, or you know, a Kubernetes cluster or whatever else you may want to do with it. Um, but that will be the next steps and coming shortly. Um, the other thing I will just claim on this was that there was one, there was one trick I had to do to get this, um, and we're going to figure out how to do this, how to clean this up. But I had to create a bridge on the interface on my MAS node. So let me screen share the other screen share. This one. Ah, oh, you see my notes that I crib from. Um, let's go here. Um, not Nick one. Let's go to. Ah. Why right, did I break it? All right, here we go. So I'm on Nook 3. And if you look at the interfaces here on my Nook, notice I created a bridge on the default Ethernet device that's there that is set up to grab an IP from the local network and it's all auto assigned, right? So I had to set this up on the node in Maz before I basically then deployed it, went to the node, installed LexD, uh, LexD was already installed because this is Bionic Images. I then let LXD initted the cluster and set it up. So uh, the cluster was initialized on Nook 3 and then I went to my two other Nooks and added them to the cluster. And then I went back to Nook 3 and I ran Bootstrap there and then everything worked. So there, there's still a little bit of quirkiness. It's not a direct out of the box experience yet, but we'll get there. So uh, we kind of last time talked a little bit about LexD clustering, like something that's kind of really cool to play with without, you know, just on its own without Juju. And obviously we talked, you know, we're gonna be making Juju work with it going forward. You're muted, BD. You're oh, muted. I'm good. That, good. that okay. was a really that was a great demo, Rick. Woohoo. Let me see if I can the oh it did it did complete. Uh, so let's go back and look at my, my ad unit. Choked up a little bit, but here we go. Now I've got a bunch of units, a bunch of machines, uh, containers created across my machines. Uh, let's go back here and run your status. Oh, I lot if I uh, switch to what did I do? Swarm. Oh, can't do it by memory. Oh, this is the new controller. So the new controller is up. So let's switch back to just normal cluster me. And then models and then switch to Swarm. Let's see where we're at. So voila, okay, they're all coming up. They're getting all their relations and stuff situated, but you can see I've got a seven machines slurm cluster here of BD's charms running and operating. And these are all uh, ending in the 3.3 ID. So if we go back to our list, here you can see all the 3.3s, 3, 3.3.0, three, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are the seven machines in that model. And again, you can kind of see how they're spread out across the various pieces of hardware here. And then even within, let's see, in the Resides. This may break my share. Let's see. Inside Slurm nodes, 
Uh, storm node one, two, three, four. Their machines three, four, five, six, and seven. And so here are. Ah. So here are machines three, four, five, six, and seven. So notice my workers were spread out across all three of the machines and they just kind of rotated three, six, seven, three, six. The next one would have been on seven. Wow. This is just awesome. Cool. So if you want to play with it, try it out. I encourage you to, uh, any questions, hit us up on the mailing list or an IRC. Um, we're very excited about this. I think, uh, you know, in, in Jujuland, the, LexD provider is kind of the number one used provider because it's great for testing and everything. And this lets you do that testing at a whole nother scale across machines, across different uh, devices with different networks. Uh, uh, definitely common network, but I mean, they, they actually have to communicate across a network rather than all being on the local machine. And I could definitely see doing some more HA scale out testing, proof of concepting and everything, even um, you know demos and stuff internally that would be more cost effective than throwing up. You could leave this running on this hardware in the closet for days, and I wouldn't need to you know, leave something running in a cloud, running my bill up for those days. So lots of uses, try it out. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you're using it for. You know, Come show me your, your LXC list and your Juju status and, and go, ooh, it's the pretty blinky light principle. Everyone loves to see pretty blinky lights, right? And that's all I've got for today. What do you guys, anything else you guys want to chat about? Uh, no, I'm, are... I'm speechless after that demo. <laughs> speechless. Ah, uh, it'll, it'll, I'll be more, more excited when we get, um, when we get it working on a remote cluster. That's, but that obviously, as you can imagine, is a lot more work um, because you have to establish communication on the remote machine, uh, have trusted, you know, communication, make sure that the network's all available, you know, or certificate handshakey business and stuff that happens. So um, the code base of LexD and Juju has historically been very simple because it's only been on one machine, local host, no worries about things. So it's gonna have to grow some complexity, but fortunately it's complexity we've handled on every other cloud provider to date. So it's just gonna make LexD look more like a cloud and less like a special case. Cool. Great news. Great news. All right. Well, with that, I will leave everyone go. Go enjoy your weekends and such, and we'll see you later. Thank you much. Thanks, Rick. Take care. Thanks, guys.